HDFC Bank climbs nearly 3% after it reports better than expected second quarter results. Brokerages Bernstein and Goldman Sachs also issue bullish calls on the stock. Kodak Mahindra falls uh, nearly 5% and RBL Bank is down more than 10% after second quarter numbers reflect plain in the unsecured credit segment. Tata Consumer Products down nearly 9% after the company reported subdued second quarter. Beverage volumes dip while the company also lost some market share in the tea business. The market shares tech Mahindra second quarter numbers. The dollar revenue growth and margins beat estimates. The stock is up close to 2%. India Mart trading 15% lower after a disappointing set of second quarter numbers. Collection growth dipped sharply to 5% from double digit earlier, while paid subscriber growth too did not bounce back. In fact, we'll be joined by the CEO Dinesh Agarwal shortly to discuss their quarter in further detail. Don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome to Chartbusters. I'm Nigel. With me is Mangalam. We're back together, united for Chartbusters. The markets, well, we saw an intraday dip, but that dip got bought into. And the stock of the last 30 minutes is Bajaj Auto. It was down closer on a percent and a half. Now it's up closer on 3%. Mr. Bajaj coming in there and talking up the market, talking, saying that he's extremely confident with regard to the plans going ahead. He also said that he believes the stock is attractively priced post that fall that we have seen. And he's looking at ways to buy some shares as well from the open market. It's spiked up and from the top, I think it's come off a, a little bit as well. So that's the stock of the last half hour, Mangla. It's definitely the stock of the last half hour. The other thing that we'll be watching out for is what happens to Tata Chem as well. You know, it's been yeah. extremely volatile over the last couple of weeks or so, currently sitting with a gain of almost 10 odd percent. There is a fair amount of uncertainty over what happens to the future of the Tata Sun's IPO. Obviously, you know, there would be some clarity on that shortly. What we'll do is, Nigel, you know, you said that both of us have come together on Chartbusters yeah. after a very long time. I have to tell you that, you know, uh, where I was over yeah. the last uh, 48 hours, it was at the distillery of Johnny Walker, wow. something that you would thoroughly have enjoyed. But don't worry, there may be a bit of a, a present for you. Lovely. Up top I'll later be marching then, you know? <laughs> So, yes, keep marching, keep walking. In fact, what we'll do is uh, take a short break. On the other side, uh, the CEO, Dinesh Agarwal, shortly joins in to discuss uh, the quarter of India Mart in further detail. Welcome back. You're watching us here on Chartbusters. Now for the management that everyone is awaiting, that is India Mart. Because, uh, you know, the stock is trading 15% lower after what can be called as a disappointing set of second quarter numbers. The collection growth dipped sharply to 5%. Uh, you know, the expectation was double-digit growth earlier, and that was uh, what the management's uh, target was as well. Paid subscriber growth, too, did not bounce back. So to discuss this and, more importantly, the way forward, we have Dinesh Agarwal, who is the CEO at India Mart, joining in. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Agarwal, for joining in. Always a pleasure speaking with you. We talk about quarterly numbers after every quarter. This time around, the street is disappointed because, basis what you said the last time to what has been delivered this time around, there has been a bit of a gap. You know, paid subscriber growth, that's taking time to come back. And when do you get back to this net subscriber additions of five to 8,000 per quarter? The street really wants to know that. Yeah, I wish I could uh, have a very good answer to that. Uh, we are trying to control the churn in the early uh, silver customer base. Uh, as we said, uh, while uh, there is uh, the top 50% customers account for about 75% of the revenue, and that piece uh, continues to grow well, uh, we are having continuous challenges on the uh, new set of customers who are coming in in the silver monthly and silver annual. And that is what we are trying to fix. It is taking much longer than what we anticipated. All right. So for the first half of the year, Dinesh Ji, you have done close to around 4,000 in terms of an addition. For the second half of the year, what could that number approximately be? Can you do close to eight to 10,000 for the second half of the year? Uh, I won't be able to commit any number as of now. But it will be better than the first half at least. Should be, because the fourth quarter is generally better, yeah. All right. So give us a broad range, though. Can you do, I mean, as things stand as of now, could it be in that vicinity of around six to around 8,000? Visibility as of now, maybe eight to 10,000 is a stretch. 
But six to eight thousand. Is... About that, maybe in the uh, after the next quarter, uh, if mm, we get right. some grip, then we will be able to give you some numbers. Okay, okay. all right. So let's keep that aside then in terms of subscription addition. But what about collections? You know that went up only by around five percent on a year-on-year -year basis, and the street was very, very disappointed about that. There were some execution issues. So explain that to us. And you're talking about returning collection growth returning to double digits. Will it return to double digits for the second half of the year, or in an average for the full year? So on the on the collection side, we uh, definitely uh, got caught on a bad uh, foot this particular quarter. If you really see, our collections have been uh, growing well, uh, well over uh, double digits in the past. And uh, we have been warning that it may not be closer to that 15-20% because the customer net customer growth has been uh, muted for many, many quarters now. Now, uh, should it be resulting into 5% growth? Uh, I don't expect that. But uh, since we have not been able to deliver, uh, let me come back and uh, uh, do some changes and deliver, and then only we can uh, commit any number. So, uh, wh what would those still say that uh, we should expect a double-digit growth? Double-digit for the full year or for the next couple of quarters? Next couple of quarters, you know, I think uh, uh, right. full year, uh, whatever whatever is gone past is gone past. Okay, because, you know, there are brokerages which are expecting, you know, the next couple of quarters also to not see double digit. In fact, they expect this to uh, prolong a little bit. So, just wanted uh, your thoughts on that one. And also, you know, just uh, uh, before we talk about this itself, the margins, uh, you know, they've, they've seen improvement over the last three quarters. But part of that could be you addressing the churn in the near term and prioritizing that over the other investments that you would have. So, what's your sense on how margins pan out from here on? No, I think uh, uh, if you if you really see the cash flow from operation vis-a-vis -vis collections, the margins have not really grown. Uh, hmm. What happens is uh, because of the deferred revenue, as I've been explaining this to the street again and again, uh, our collections go into the deferred revenue and deferred revenue flows into the revenue because right. of the longer period subscription. So what is happening currently, if you see the revenue from operation is showing 18% growth. Whereas the collection is only showing uh, five six percent growth, so uh, correspondingly the uh, <clears throat> the uh, the cost is not uh, uh, commensurate to the uh, hmm. uh, revenue. The second part is uh, since our net customer addition is slower, uh, we are also not pressing paddle on the gross customer addition because right. uh, until we fix the churn, there is no point. Uh, uh, trying to uh, bump up the gross collection, uh, gross customer addition for one or two quarters. So uh, that is also giving us some leeway on the uh, uh, <clears throat> cost of customer acquisition, which is uh, upfront heavy and then gets amortized over time. And that is why okay. you are seeing the elevated uh, uh, margins. As we have been guiding, that margins in the long run should be at around 33%. All right, 33% in the long term for the margins. This so, is a standalone margin, right? X of the inorganic. Yes, yes. Got it. I, you know, since I just touched upon inorganic, I wanted to ask you about, you know, I think what you have done around, if I'm not mistaken, six to eight acquisitions of the recent past, in you know, the last few years. And one of those acquisitions is Busy Infotech. I think when you acquired it, it was doing revenues of 13 to 15 crores. Currently, as well as it's in, the, it's in that vicinity. So, what is the plan with regard to this inorganic growth that you have done, uh, Dinesh? See, because the core business is struggling a little bit. It's taking time to recover. So, what is the plan with this? If you want to give us a number on busy infotech, on a quarterly basis, where do you see the revenue run rate go up? And some of these acquisitions, if they're not working out, will you look to sell them? Or do you want to grow them? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have done two acquisitions and we have done uh, about 10 uh, minority investments. Yes. Out yes. of the two acquisition, one is a very early stage life keeping, which is uh, Tally on mobile. Uh, so that has started to sell only recently. Now coming to the busy, which was the large acquisition that we did, uh, we uh, when we acquired the company, it was about 40 odd crores uh, annual uh, uh, company, 40, 42 mm. odd. Now uh, at uh, current run rate, it is about 70 odd crores. So we, we expect that this particular year from the acquisition three years ago, uh, it will become uh, double in these three years. So okay. we are uh, reasonably happy uh, that nothing has gone wrong. 
and as well as uh, it is growing albeit slowly but i think we are happy with the acquisition all right so uh, 80 crores is what you will do uh, this year is what you are saying 3 years ago when you yes, acquired was close to 40 crores 80 crores currently yeah, right it at uh, is is about 68 70 crores but also. but when you acquired it you were talking about it having a big runway so if you have to guide us for the next 2 years what do you see this number go with regard to this acquisition and also all the others since business is struggling a little bit do you want to raise some cash you know and sell some stakes minority stakes in any of these companies no i think cash is we, we already have 2500 crores of cash on our balance sheet so there is no uh, i mean in terms of profitability we are still generating more than 100 crores of cash per quarter right and fourth quarter is about 200 crores so, so effectively we are generating in excess of 500 crores of cash so there is no uh, difficulty on that side of the business or survival of the business or anything like that we are uh, right. very happy with the performance in terms of the bottom line where the only thing is the growth uh, that right. we are trying to address and uh, for busy i think we will continue to have the similar growth of upwards of 20 25% in the coming year as well just a quick answer before you know we let you go sir you have refrained from giving us any specific numbers but could you give us a sense of by when do you expect this churn to settle you have uh, you know started this process of uh, reducing that by when do you expect could you give us a timeline in the next one quarter two quarter three quarters I mean, I've I've been deferring it uh, with, with one or two quarter every time, so I I have no no face to say that I will be able to fix it in one or two quarters. But let me see. All right, all right. We wish you well, uh, Dinesh. Ji. Sometimes businesses get a little bit tough. Uh, you have generated a lot of wealth for shareholders, but in today's trading session, the stock is down because the street is clearly disappointed with regard to these numbers. But we hope for a recovery. And when you, that happens, we re-invite you here on CNBC TV. You know, Nigel, thanks a lot for joining just us. Just one thing that uh, while business is tough, uh, what you have to give is to his honesty. He yeah. said that he has been guiding, he has been unable to go ahead and achieve that guidance. So at right at this point in time, he does not want to give any guidance. He has no face to show because of uh, yeah. missing the earlier guidances. So that sort of honesty um, is something that will perhaps go along. And way. hopefully numbers follow post that. Well, for the time being, let's slip into a short break. On the other side, we have very, very interesting conversation lined up with the management of Vari Energies. Their IPO opens up. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, the much-awaited IPO, Vare Energies. Well, that's opened up as well. It's a solar PV module manufacturer. Four hundred, four thousand three hundred crores. That's uh, the total amount that they're looking to raise. And some of the details are flashing for you on the screen. Mr. Hitesh Doshi, the chairman and managing director, as well as uh, Ms. Sonal Shivastav, who is the chief financial officer, join us in the studio. Uh, hi, and thanks a lot for coming down to our studio. Well, you're looking to raise this money, so let's get the basics out of the way first. What is the utilization of this money? How does the books look, both of the company as well as at the promoter level? First of all, thank you very much for inviting us and giving this opportunity. Uh, what we are doing today, so I'll start with that. We are manufacturing solar panels. This is around 13.3 gigawatt. Yes. Then we are starting in the next quarter, this physical year, our sale manufacturing, that is a 5.4 gigawatt. Yes. Right. Apart from this, we own the PLI. It is for the six gigawatt ingot, wafer, sail, and module. Right. Okay. And this project, uh, we have started working on this. And for this project, which is approximately a 9,000 crore project, uh, we have gone for the public. And part of the, from this IPO, yes. will be used for this new project. With this, all the capacities putting together, we'll reach to the 21 gigawatt. Okay. And of course, that also includes a 1.6 gigawatt a new facility in a US and that will be also operational in the next quarter. So this money that you're raising will be used for expansion. So could you tell us how does the books then look post this fundraise? What is the books of the entity that is to be listed? How does it look? And also at the promoter level, you know, you're taking some money off the table as well. So how does the promoter look in terms of pledge, in terms of debt in its books at both levels, the listed entity and at the promoter yeah. level as yeah. well? 
So, uh, when I look at the listed entity, it is debt free, number okay. one. Uh, we are raising, uh, currently the net worth is about 4,400 crores. Mm -hmm. So, we will add 3,600 right. crores yes. and it will be spent for capex and uh, other uh, general corporate purposes. And this is enough to take you to that expansion target, 13 to 21 or will you have to tap the market again or raise some debt? No, we don't envisage uh, looking at the market because uh, this amount is going to be spent over two years. All right. And so part IPO money will go for this. Uh, we hope to have good internal accruals. And of course, we have tied up debt okay. as well, but we will see how much we will draw down. You know. Right. So right now, we are very comfortable on a capital structure perspective. Right. You know, the macros of the industry are pretty favorable. We all know the, uh, the, the opportunity out here, so to say. And your order book says that too. It is currently more than your capacity. But what I want to understand is the operational efficiency potential out here. There are two drivers. One is increasing exports. They have around 300 to 350 basis points better margins, as you were pointing out last time. And the second part is backward integration. Because up until now, you're just assembling all of that. Once you start having backward integration, you will have that cost advantage as well. So just from both these parameters, if you could give us a sense that currently, you know, X percent of your pro uh, sales is exports, how much will that increase to over the next three to five years? And backward integration as well. Currently, it's nearly zero. How much does that increase to? Mm. No, thank you. Thanks for this question. I think, of course, the scale helps a lot. So what we are manufacturing at 2 gigawatt probably three years back and today at 13 gigawatt and maybe 21, that will help us a lot. Additionally, backward integration. Because of the high demand of the alternative supply chain globally, as well as the local lot of projects like a Kusum or rooftop, here we need some Make in India cells. Mm. So because of this, there is a good demand of the cells and that will also help to improve the margins. So as a company, the scale, backward integration and a lot of other things which we are doing in terms of offering a complete solutions to the customer with the batteries or for the hydrogen or developing a constantly the new products. Today, probably we have the largest product range uh, in terms of the solar panels. Right, but you know, globally. if you could give us uh, quick numbers as to how much will be backward integrated over the next three to five years? Was the glide path there? And what would the concomitant right. cost so savings be? Because 21 of that? gigawatt will be the cells. Mm. Yes. 11 gigawatt, uh, sorry, 21 but gigawatts will be the modules. modules 11. 11 will be the cells. So nearly 55% backward. 6 gigawatt will be the ingot and wafers. Okay. This is what we had planned now and for which we have entered right. in RHB. You know, so I can, I can feel the passion about the business that you have, you know, but from a share market perspective, the viewers and your shareholders would like to know what is the cost savings. So typically, you know, globally as well, there are various players. Mm, right. So when someone gets backward integrated, what is the percentage in terms of savings they get? What is the margin difference? You know, once I get backward integrated, I'm getting it from my own backyard. While as now you're, you're sourcing it. Mm, so right. typically, what is the savings? A ballpark number, sir. If you look, even if we consider if my supplier is making even a 5% profit on the Got components it. he's supplying to yeah. me. So you typically, can, so 500 basis I, points. I don't know how much they are making, got it, got it, yeah, got it. but let's say if they are making even 5% profit, that, that may uh, help us. Or, or let's, let's ask the CFO on <laughs> calculations out here, you know, uh, irrespective of what your suppliers are making right now, you are investing in CapEx, whether it's backward integrated or not, you will always target a return on capital employed on that CapEx that you're doing, right? What is that number? Yeah. So if you uh, look at my past performance, you know, uh, I have grown from uh, an EBITDA margin of 6% to 15.5% in the last fiscal. Right. And if you look at my ROE numbers, it is 30 plus, right? Mm. Of course, I want to target the same numbers, you know, and we'll continue to focus on whatever efficiencies we can derive uh, from the backward integration, just as we have done for the module. So 300, uh, 400 basis points, 500 basis points. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what would be, what would be, uh, take, take your pick. <laughs> Uh, I, I think we have to wait and watch for some time. Yeah. And we'll, we'll definitely come back. You, you know, we're going to let you all go today, but on <laughs> listing, we're going to push all for those numbers. We wish you all, all the best, but very quickly, the worry is, will there be overcapacity in the industry here in India? Very quickly, tell us what are the numbers as of now? What is the capacity? What is the requirement? And will there be a scarcity even for the next few years? No, I don't think there will be any scarcity because okay. the capacities are coming up and companies like us, we are also ramping up. Right. Mm. But if you look to the demand, uh, 500 gigawatt we have to do by 2030. And today we are done close to 150. Okay. Mm. So in balance 350, uh, we need at least 70% of the solar. Right. And that will come. We are at 90 today. So this, and we are not talking only the Indian market at Wari. 
we are looking to the providing alternate supply chain globally. Mm. Okay. All right. So you believe basically that there's a long yeah. runway for your business. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's a pleasure talking okay. to both of you. Thanks a lot for coming down to the studio. On the listing, ma'am, we'll be pushing you for some more numbers. <laughs> yeah. But thanks a lot for joining. I really appreciate your time. And thank, thank you, you very thank much. You so thank much. you. Well, on that note, though, we'll have to wrap up on this edition of Chartbusters. You don't go anywhere. Trading now comes up next.